Well, good morning. Good morning. We begin this new sermon series called Connecting the Dots. In some ways, we really just want to invite you to think about how we may be faithful and live out our call, even though we may not always understand what God is doing. Because in some ways, I think that's what many of us are trying to do, is to connect, is to connect the dots even in our own lives. So I want you to just join me in pause just for a quick word of prayer. God, even, even in our faults, you use us, you speak through us. And so today we just give you thanks for the many ways that you bless us and provide for us. Not just in just material things, but in the ways that you fill our souls spiritually. And so we pray for this time of worship and for this preaching moment that it will just not answer the prayer on our lips, but the prayer that's on our heart. So God, use us, shape us, mold us, and be present here with us today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. So we're going to start off with something easy today. We're going to start off with something easy. I know we have some children in the room at age and at heart and at heart. So let me see if you can guess what this is. All right. All right. Close. All right. I saw some of you mouthing the words. Correct. Now let's see if you can get this one right. Good, good, very good, very good. You all are sharp, you all are sharp, you all are sharp. So some of you were correct, some of you were correct. Now, if only life was that easy to figure out. If only life was always that easy to understand what God is doing, but the reality of it is that it's not. In fact, by show of hands, whether you're here, and I invite those of you who are online as well, you can type this into the chat. How many of you can say with 100% certainty that you have always understood or everything in your life has always made sense? All right, not a single solitary hand, and I bet you were silent on the chat as well. You know why? Because much of life looks like this. Or it looks like this. It looks like these random scattering of dots that just don't seem to connect or make any sense at all. But in fact, one theologian put it like this, life is lived forwards, but it's understood backwards. Life is lived forwards, but it is understood backwards. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Many of the things that we experience seem mysterious and even confusing in the moment, but it's only when we look backwards, it's only when we reflect on them, do we actually start connecting the dots and actually making sense of all of the things that have happened, the people that we've met along the way, the things that we have experienced, the good and bad and everything in between? It's only when we look backwards. So over the next few weeks, we're going to look at the life of Joseph, and you may uncover some things that have already been there. Because I think much of our understanding of faith and learning about God is really recognizing the things that's already there. I mean, God has always been active. We just couldn't connect the dots. We just, we just, we just couldn't see it. We just, we just couldn't see it. Because life is lived forward, but it's understood backward. Now, as we look backwards, we see that Joseph's story takes a turn when he starts dreaming. But if we're honest, let's be honest, the dream seems a bit off. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, it doesn't add up. In fact, Joseph's dream just wasn't connecting. Because in his dream, he saw them all out in the fields gathering wheat. And in his dream, Joseph's bundle of wheat, it stood upright, and the bundles of his brothers 
circled around his bundle and started bowing down to him. Now, his brothers, now for some of you who've got siblings, you know exactly what I'm talking about. His brothers mocked the very idea that they would bow down to their little brother. I mean, what did this dream mean? They couldn't see it. They just couldn't see Joseph reigning over them. Then he had another dream. And this one dream was even more crazy because this time the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowed down to him. And even his father, the one that favored him, the one that held him in high esteem, questioned the validity of this dream. I mean, even his loving father had to wonder, so now what do you think your mother and your father and your brothers are going to bow down to you? I mean, even his father questioned the validity of his dreams. But it's actually a very encouraging word for you and I because this suggests something important that we can't forget. Much of what God can and will do in your life, you won't be able to see coming. Let this be a reminder, you can't see it. The truth is, the people who you love sometimes can't see it. The people who don't like you sometimes can't see it. And oftentimes, you won't be able to see it yourselves. I mean, take a moment and let that sink in for a bit. Whatever you think you can see and discern God moving in your life, you can't see it because, because God's ability is just so beyond what we can think or even understand. I mean, our, our minds are just not large enough. Our imagination is just not big enough. I mean, what, whatever God wants to do in our lives, most of it you will never see coming. I mean, Joseph couldn't see it. His father couldn't see it. His brothers couldn't see it. And yet the reason why there are so many dots that we can't connect is because we're trying to connect them with our heads instead of with our hearts. We're looking for the things and the dots that seem related, the experiences that seem similar, and with, and with our heads, the dots in our lives just don't seem to make sense. I mean, I want you to think about this. There's nothing in Joseph's past, there's nothing in his present, there's nothing in his future that suggests that this dream is a likely possibility. He is not of royalty. He is the younger brother. His brothers can't stand him. I mean, there's nothing in his life that suggests that his older brothers will be bowing down to him like he's reigning as a person of royalty. I mean, how is this going to happen? When? When is it going to happen? What does the dream even mean? But maybe that's the thing about God. I want you to watch. God has promised to do a lot of things in our lives. God has promised to, to, to heal us and to be there with us. God has promised to, to walk with us. But nowhere in the Bible does God promise that God will make sense. Nowhere. You can, you can search it. I know we've got some theologians in the room, but nowhere has God promised you in your life that God is supposed to make sense. And I think we come with the assumption that God is always supposed to make sense in our heads, but God operates outside of our own thinking and imagination. I mean, God doesn't operate by our rules. God doesn't go by our time. I mean, God can connect two contradictory things and experiences and people and somehow make them fit in our lives because God does not operate the way we do. Now, we come with the assumption of faith that God is supposed to make sense. And the reason why some of us are not able to connect the dots in our lives is because the dots don't make sense. But let me help you. They're not supposed to make sense. But it works out in your favor. In fact, let me prove it. This past week, in Staff Chapel, Dawn Fitch, who was the admin of our worship department, shared her faith stories. We're going through uh, a staff 
sharing faith stories, and just about every week we've got some of our staff who are sharing with each other. And Dawn shared that when her granddaughter was born, she contracted a staph infection at birth, and when she was delivered, they immediately took her to the NICU because she wasn't breathing properly. Now, day after day, after day her condition stayed the same, and the doctors would come back day after day with the report that she still hadn't turned the corner. For 17 days, they could not figure out, they could not make sense of why her oxygen levels were not getting higher. Now, Dawn was and still is a member of the choir, and the director at the time, Mark Squire, asked the choir to pray one night on Thursday. Some of you may have been there may have remembered this, but he asked them to pray on one Thursday night, and he asked them to hold out their hands like they were holding a newborn baby, and in their prayer, to act like they were breathing life back into the lungs of Dawn's granddaughter. Now, this happened on a Thursday night, and then on Friday, the doctors came into the room and had the report that the, baby, that the baby had finally turned the corner without any intervention. I mean, the doctors couldn't make sense of it. Medically, it didn't make sense. Practically, it didn't make sense. Logically, it didn't make sense. But I told you, God does not always make sense in your life. We're trying to understand God with our heads instead of understanding God with our hearts. There are some dots in your life that won't make any sense. It won't make logical sense. It won't make medical sense. It won't make psychological sense because whatever you think, you see you can't because sometimes God just doesn't make sense in your life but often it works out in your favor now the commentators fought and blamed Joseph for his brothers hating him but all Joseph was trying to do all he's trying to do church is look for answers all Joseph is trying to do is help, is find somebody to help him connect the dots in his life, to help him understand his dream. He's just, he's just looking for somebody to help him understand what all of this means for his life. And I think that's a story for many of us because I would bet some of you have come here at one Sunday just asking God to help you understand something that's been going on in your life. Because I think at the core of what we desire, it's just answers to the things in our lives that we can't always understand or comprehend in the moment. Because we just can't see what purpose this serving. We can't see why this person came in and out of our lives. We don't know why they left. We couldn't see how this is going to work out. So we just need, we just, we just, we just need some answers. I mean, even faithful people need answers sometimes. In our relationships, in our walk with God, we just, we just sometimes come to a place where we just need some answers. But hear this, hear this, and don't, and don't walk out and leave. Ushers, I want you to block the doors. I want, I want, I want anybody leaving for the next five minutes. Because, because one of the biggest misconceptions about faith is that it's supposed to give us all the answers. But can I help you? Promise you won't leave. An honest walk with God will give you more questions than answers. I know you didn't want to hear that. I know you came, you came, you came looking for answers. An honest walk with God will give you more questions than answers. Listen, listen, faith, faith gives you more questions than it does give you more answers. We always, we always come and searching for answers to this and to that, but what if we reversed the assumption and, and actually lived and actually came with the assumption that God doesn't just give us answers, but if you truly walk with God authentically, 
You will, you will leave scratching your head sometimes because God never promised that God would make sense. I mean, here's what's so hard about Joseph's dreams is that God gives him absolutely no details. None. I mean, many people give up on faith and they disconnect from God or lose faith in themselves because when they were looking for answers, it seemed like all they got was ambiguity. And here's the, here's, here's the truth. Every faith journey comes with seasons of ambiguity. Seasons where God gives you the framework, but God gives you absolutely no details. Seasons when you pray for answers and then God is silent. Seasons where you get the inspiration, but God doesn't give you all the information. I mean, think about how much ambiguity is in this dream. I mean, we often, we often, if you've ever gone to Sunday school or if your child or granddaughter's ever come sooner or later, they will come back with a project of Joseph and the many colors. We talk about Joseph dream, Joseph dream that, Joseph dream this. But have you realized how much ambiguity is in that dream? I mean, God, God gave them, God gave them just enough to stir the pot, but not enough to clear the air. I mean, all God had to do was to tell them why this was going to happen to them, why this dream needed to happen, reassure them that it was all going to connect. I mean, you can't just throw out a dream that people are going to be bowing down to you and then not fill in the gaps. I mean, God could have easily showed them the complete picture of how this was all going to connect, which, which leads me with a theological assumption that either God is a really good instigator or God is very intentional for a reason. Maybe there's a reason for the ambiguity. Maybe there's a purpose for all the mystery. Maybe there's a reason why God doesn't show you how all the dots connect at once. Maybe it's just me, but God is, is always short on details. God has a pattern. Let me prove it to you. God says, Noah, I know you don't have any construction experience, but I want you to build an ark when there's absolutely no sign of rain. No mention whatsoever in terms of the details of when this flood was supposed to be coming. Would have been helpful at the time. God told David, a 17-year-old teenager, you are next in line to be king, but then left out the fact that it would take him actually years to get on the throne. The information would have been helpful. God tells these fishermen, follow me and I will make you fishers of men and women, but then casually leaves out that he's going to die in three years and they're going to have to fend for themselves. Would have been great information to know before they left the boats. God reminds his people, I'll give you a land flowing with milk and with honey. Sounds good, but then your God casually leaves out that they're going to have to fight the hardest battle of their lives. It would have been helpful before they left everything and started going for this land of milk and honey. I mean, God promised his people a savior, but coincidentally leaves out the date, time, and the place, and something called the crucifixion. I mean, doesn't God always seem to be short on the details in your life? Like somehow you are on this need-to-know basis, but maybe God leaves out the connected dots for a reason. Maybe there's a reason why God doesn't just magically show you how the dots are connected in your life. Maybe the reason why you only get a glimpse of a dot here and a dot there is because God knows if, if God connects the dots too early, there are some experiences that you will walk away from if you knew all of what it entailed. I mean, if, if, if you really saw the complete picture of your life right now, it might be too much for you to handle. Let me prove it. That's why the job description says, other duties as assigned. Because they know if you knew all the other duties that you have to do, 
you may not sign up for that job. I mean, if we really knew how hard relationships were going to be, some of us wouldn't even date ourselves, right? I mean, if we, if we, if we really knew how hard starting the business or going back to school or starting the new job or dating again or moving again or joining the church, if we knew how hard things would really be, we might walk away from them because the road to get there might be too intimidating. The struggles might be overwhelming if we really knew all the details. Watch this. If we really knew all the details of our lives, we might abandon some of the best things that have ever happened to us. The ambiguity is not meant to confuse us, but to protect us. So God gives us what we can digest in the moment. God loves us enough to only give us the amount of information that we can handle at the time. Let me prove it. I got the keys to my car. Now, my children are nine, eight, and four. And if I told you that I was going to give the keys to my children right now, you would logically assume that I had lost my mind and something wasn't right. Because it's irresponsible to give them something that they are not mature enough to handle. They haven't developed enough to even comprehend the gravity of the responsibility of driving a car. It would be detrimental to them and it will be detrimental to those of you who are driving out on the road. They might hurt themselves, they might hurt you. I mean, they just aren't ready yet. So my job as the loving father is to love them enough to withhold even the things that they might want simply because I love them. I had to love them enough to give them what their minds and maturity can handle. You see, there are times when we think we want the answers. We think we want to know the details of our lives. We think we want to know how things connect in our lives. But the ambiguity that we sometimes feel, it's not because God doesn't love you. It's not because God is not there. It's not because God is not a loving God. It's because God loves us enough to give us what our faith and maturity can handle at the moment. Because there are some things that if God showed you right now, we might not have the faith or the, or the maturity enough to really digest and to handle them in the ways we might want to. So sometimes all we can handle is a dream without details. Sometimes all we can digest is a random sky of disconnected dots because there is no way that Joseph would sign up for this dream if we knew all the places it was going to take him. But here's the problem with ambiguity. Many people don't like ambiguity. For some of you, comprehension is a prerequisite for your, for your participation and your commitment. And the ambiguity creates anxiety. And the anxiety around ambiguity leads to impulsiveness. I mean, just think about his brothers. They can't live with the ambiguity that was created by Joseph's dreams. And we'll get into this on next week. But his brothers couldn't handle the ambiguity, so they devised a plot to kill Joseph. I mean, what would this dream mean for them? What just about him? What did it mean for his brothers? So because they can't make sense out of what Joseph and what God is doing in Joseph's life. They make an impulsive decision to kill Joseph. I mean, we don't, we don't, I mean, let's be honest. We don't make, we don't always make bad decisions. We just make impulsive ones because we will, we will connect the dots in our, we, we will connect the dots that are not even there. We will, we will draw our own dots, connect our own dots. Sometimes we run, we hide. We will do anything to make sense of our lives, even if we have to manufacture it. But at no point does Joseph get the answer he's looking for. All that he's left is with a dream. He's left with a scattering of doubts 
that he has to figure out. He doesn't. Joseph does not receive a single answer, and maybe some of you are looking for answers today, but let me challenge you that faith is not just revealed when the dots are connecting, but it's in the life that we live even when we don't always understand what's going on. It's the life that we live even when we can't see it. A few months ago, I shared in my own faith story I want to share it with you today of how my faith journey started out. Now, I'm 100% positive that some of you would think I'm crazy after this dream. I already know it. I won't think any less of you. I get it. I understand. No hard feelings. But here's, here's, here's how my faith started out. So I had a dream one night that an evil spirit was chasing me. And I tried as best as I could to elude the evil spirit, but it kept following me. I ran as fast as I could, but I couldn't shake it. I went inside of houses. I went inside of buildings. I went inside of crowds, but the evil spirit just wouldn't leave me alone. So off, off in the distance, I saw this building, and there was a pole leading up beyond the clouds, and I knew if I can just get on that building and start climbing up that pole, I know that I can be safe. So I ran through the building, up the stairs. The evil spear was relentless and kept chasing me. I got, to the top of, I got to the top of the building, and there was this pole leading up beyond the clouds, but there was this glass structure. There was this glass structure that was in front of this pole. But the glass structure didn't have any handles, no doors, but it had a small slit underneath. And so at that moment, I prayed to God, and my body turned into liquid form, I told you you think I was crazy. My body turned into liquid form. I went underneath the slit. I turned back into human form. I climbed onto the pole. The evil spirit stopped chasing me, and I woke up. I woke up and told my mother, I don't know what this means, but we are starting going to church this Sunday. I don't know what all, I don't know evil spirits, I don't know, I, I don't know what all of this means, but we are going to start going to church, and we've never looked back since. But here's the thing, I didn't understand it at the moment. In fact, I still don't understand all that was in the dream, but I think some answers you get right away, and there are some answers that we have to keep living. Because some of you may have come looking for answers today, But just let me challenge and maybe even encourage you that maybe the dots are not supposed to make sense right now. Maybe the dream isn't supposed to make sense. But just because something doesn't make sense doesn't mean there isn't, it doesn't mean there's something absent in your life. Just because the dream doesn't make sense doesn't mean that there's not anything divine about it. Because you can be totally in the dark about something great that's happening in your life. It can be mysterious and unexplainable and still be a blessing. It can be confusing and still be a God sin at the same time. You can wake up and not know what the dream means, and it can still be from God. Because with no answer, his story unfolds. So my prayer is that as you watch Joseph's life unfold, in these next few weeks that you would allow yours to unfold as well. Because maybe there are some dots that you haven't even connected and moves of God that you have yet to notice. Because remember, life is lived forward, but it's understood backwards. 